Can I tell you about one of the most frightening things that's ever happened to me in my life? And it may surprise you what it has to deal with. And I'm hesitant to even share it because number one, you probably think I'm crazy, but I don't really care. The other one is that it shook me to my core then and it still shakes me to my core now to talk about it. Welcome to day 18 of our 21 days together in the book of John, where we're in John chapter 18 and Jesus officially gets betrayed. We see him voluntarily make his way over to the Garden of Gethsemane. Judas shows up along with a flock of people, hundreds of people, just to take one man away. But Jesus knew it was going to happen because it says so in verse four. But then it goes on in verse four and it says that he went forward and said to this crowd, he said, whom are you seeking? And they answered him, said Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, it says who betrayed him, was right there with them. In verse 6, though, it says, Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Did you catch that? All the people that had come to take this one man away found themselves lying on the ground when this one man said three words. You know why that happened? It's because the very nature of God, the divine authority of God, came out right there in that moment and proves to all of us that Jesus was not a victim. Jesus chose to be right there, and Jesus was in full control of what was happening. And I know in that moment for me, if that had happened, and if I was one of the soldiers on the other side, I think I would have said, see y'all later, I'm going home. Because, you know, we liken the presence of God with something that makes us feel good. And I'm not saying that it don't because I've been in numerous church services where I leave encouraged and stirred up and fired up. But sometimes the presence of God can be so strong that it doesn't feel good. Years ago when I was living in Tennessee, late one night, everybody's in bed. I'm up in my living room reading my Bible on the couch. And I've had my rocky times with God. I've had my times when my relationship was almost non-existent. But in this moment, in this season of my life, it was better than it ever had been. And it was in that moment while I was reading the word of God that something terrifying happened. God showed up. And in my experience, that always felt good. But in this moment, it did not feel good at all. As a matter of fact, it felt so overwhelming that I didn't know that I was going to be able to survive the next second. And as scared as I was, I lifted my feet up off the floor. I moved them up on the couch with me because I didn't know what was going on. And it was in that moment that I felt God speak to me and said, Brian, I'm here. And if I lifted my grace off of you for one second you would no longer be here. And Brian, there's a battle going on around you that you can't see. And if you could see it, it would overwhelm you to the point that you would not be able to survive. And that entire battle is going on just for you. Well, I can tell you that that night changed my life. But I can also tell you that I didn't have goosebumps. I didn't feel like I had been in a worship service. I felt like life had flashed before my eyes. And so I stood right there. I stayed there on the couch all night long because I was afraid to get up. A grown man afraid to get off the couch in his own home. The next morning came around, daylight comes, and I find the bravery to get off the couch. And I didn't know what to do. But I knew this. This life that I have, it's not mine. <laughs> I'm not taking another breath without the grace of God. And it was God who laid down his son's life and paid the full ransom for me and for you. And for that, we owe him our life. I am nothing. And God proved that to me that night. But I'm thankful because he invites us to join him in the life that he has given us. I hope you experience that sometime. Love you guys.